Well, good morning, everybody. First, let me say thank you, Congresswoman, for uh, allowing me to be here and be a part of this this morning, and thank you for, for hosting uh, this event. It's uh, certainly timely in the state of North Carolina. Senators, uh, representatives, thank you for the work that you do on these issues as well. Best in see, Brenda, thank you. My colleagues on the State Board of Education, Olivia Oxidine is here. I'm sure others as well. So many of you have been working on these issues for some time, and you're very passionate about it, but I think this is really the the perfect storm in so many ways of good things coming together to impact rural North Carolina and our rural schools across our state and really our rural communities in general. And I, I really want to talk about it some level, a whole community solution, but we'll focus on schools today. You know, back uh, about five years ago, uh, before I was even lieutenant governor, right before I became lieutenant governor, I started making this bold proclamation. I'd say, you know, I believe that North Carolina will be the first state in the nation to have every classroom connected to high-speed broadband. We weren't even close to that at the time. I said, I believe we'll be the first state in the nation, second most rural, remember, to be connected, to have every classroom connected to high-speed broadband. At the end of this school year, we will actually achieve that goal, to be the first state in the nation to have every classroom connected to high-speed broadband. That is a big goal, and that's a bright, shiny prize for North Carolina. <laughs> I'm also not going to take credit for that. There have been a lot of people working on that issue for decades in North Carolina to get us to the position that we could even make such a statement. But along the way, um, we said, you know what, how, how do we start to achieve that? At the time, there was uh, about uh, $20 million being put into broadband from the General Assembly uh, across our state to get classrooms wired, to get schools wired. Uh, we ended up going to Washington, D.C. and working with the FCC. Do we have folks from the Friday Institute here? Back from the Friday, I said, not not yet. Well, we went we went to the uh, went to D.C. worked with the Federal Communications Commission, met with the chairman, and I was sitting with the chairman. I said, you know, Mr. Chairman, I said we would like to be your bright shiny object. I believe North Carolina is further along in this issue than any other state in the country, and we can be your bright shiny object to do something that nobody else has done. And he said, you know what he said? He said we agree. We want you to do that. We came back to North Carolina and we worked with uh, our Senator, Senator Brown and his team to say, what can we do in North Carolina to leverage an additional, we needed an additional $12 million, got $32 million, leverage that $32 million to get $65 million from the federal government, $100 million a year going into connectivity to connect those classrooms. Big, bold goal for people working together across the aisle, uh, Democrats at the FCC working with the Republican legislature in North Carolina to achieve a goal for our entire state and for students all across the state. Well, we're getting ready to achieve that goal. We're doing great things. The perfect storm's coming together with devices, the cost of devices being uh, lowered, the cost of uh, data and connectivity being lowered to a point where everybody can afford to do the things we're doing, the content and curriculum being developed to be delivered on those devices. So students in poor rural North Carolina have the same hope and opportunity for an excellent education as students in wealthier parts of our state that have had for years. And shame on us in this day and age that we still have schools that are not at par uh, with one another across our state. We have all the tools and resources to do this. I always couch this in, in saying this, you know, we, we didn't worship the pencil, let's not worship technology. Don't worship the computer. It's a tool that we use, but it's a tool that will help bridge the gap of, of education that's existed uh, in this state and around the world, quite frankly, uh, forever. And I believe we're going to be first. We're going to be on the cutting edge to do this. But one of those components is last mile connectivity. And we can figure this out just like we figured out uh, getting broadband to the classroom. This is infrastructure. Broadband to the home, broadband to our communities, infrastructure just like roadways and railways and, and the like are infrastructure to our communities. And so we're going to work on this, and we are going to figure this out. Uh, the Bright Futures Act is, is a step in the right direction. Uh, we, are, we are working in the right direction to make this happen, but I also believe that there's another perfect storm coming together here to make that happen. Uh, I'll be spending a decent amount of time in D.C. working with the administration up there to say, you know what, we, we not only need to connect our, our houses for education, because providing edu education opportunities to students is critical, but think about the, the issues like telehealth. Uh, people in poor rural communities across the state of North Carolina that don't have access to health care can now have access to health care by being connected to broadband through their homes. It saves the health care industry tremendous amounts of money, but more importantly, it focuses health care solutions on the individual person in the community. Think about energy, sustainability of the grid and energy. And so the Department of Energy, the Department of uh, Health and Human Services, uh, HUD, all of these agencies in the federal government have a stake in this. We should be going to them and saying, we want to be your bright shiny object. We believe North Carolina can be the first state in the nation to connect the last mile. 
And don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about municipal broadband. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think the government is in the position to uh, be a provider of internet services. That hasn't worked. We've kind of proven that across the country. But the government does have a role to play. And everybody in this room has a role to play in making that happen. And if we all get together, if we really don't care who gets the credit, we don't care who takes the credit for these kind of things, we can accomplish really, really amazing goals. And we can be the first state in the country to do this. And everybody across the world will be looking at North Carolina and say, how did they make that happen? So thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you for all the efforts you're putting into this, Senators. Uh, thank you for all the efforts you've been putting into this for years to make this happen. And we'll look forward to a bright future in North Carolina. Y'all have a great day. Thank you.